OK, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to look up a value that falls between two dates. Now, the way you do this very much depends on the layout of your data. The easiest way by far is to have your dates laid out like this. So the date ranges here are the 8th of January through to the 19th of February and then the 20th of February through to the 26th of March. So it's the first value to one less than the second value and so on and so forth down this list. You may, however, have your dates laid out like this. So the ranges are expressed within each row. So I'll show you how to do this lookup using both of these layouts. The second layout, I'll show you how to do this in Excel 365 and how to do it in earlier versions of Excel. So let's start with this layout here. This layout is by far the easiest to use. All I need to do is use VLOOKUP. My lookup value will be the date I'm trying to look up, comma. My table array will be this table of dates and corresponding values, which I would need to lock, comma. Col index number. So that's the position of the column within the table array that contains the values you want to borrow. So we want to borrow these rates for any given date period. So col index is two. And then the range lookup would be true approximate match. And that will give me the correct rate for the given date. So the 18th of the 3rd, 2023 is in the range 20th of February 2023 to the 26th of March 2023. If I change this date, let's say I change it to the 16th of the 7th 2023, then I get 6.12%, which is in this range here, 16th of July through to the 21st of August. Now, the only other thing I might mention here is that this last argument, range lookup, defaults to true so you don't actually need to put true there you can just end with the col index number so what if you have this layout it's a little bit more tricky i'll show you how to do it in excel 365 first so probably the easiest way to achieve this in excel 365 is with the filter function and the first argument is array so those are the results we want to return which are these cells here the rate cells and in the include argument, we need to set up our criteria for the row we want to return the rate from. Now, essentially, we're going to say, is the date greater than or equal to the start date? And is the date less than or equal to the end date? So our first criteria would be, is this date greater than or equal to these dates here? And then I'd have to put that criteria in brackets because I'm going to have to express a second criteria. And because the criteria is AND criteria, as in both criteria need to be met, I'd use a multiplication symbol, then another open bracket, and I'm going to say, is this date less than or equal to these dates? And if I close the bracket for the second criteria and then for filter and press enter, it will return the correct rate. So my date here is the 22nd of August. That's in this range here, gives me 4.21. Let's try another one, the 20th of September. 20th of September is in this range here, which gives me 4.53%, which is what I've got. Now, you won't find the filter function in all versions of Excel. So how do we achieve this in older versions of Excel? Now, if you remember in the filter function, we set up criteria to say, is this date greater than or equal to the start date and less than or equal to the end date? Now, we can use a similar idea in older versions of Excel, but we won't be using it with the filter function. So I'm going to say, first of all, is this date greater than or equal to these start dates? Now, if I just select that logical test, you can see up here, it's returning trues and falses. So the date is greater than or equal to the first three dates in my list. Now, what I want to do is to convert the trues to ones and the falses to zeros. 
And I can do that just by putting two minus signs in front of the logical test. And then I'll put the logical test in brackets. So now if I select this logical test, you can see I'm getting ones and zeros. You'll see why ones and zeros are useful as we go through this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, just as we multiplied with the filter function, because this is and criteria, and do the same thing for the other criteria. So is this date less than or equal to the end date? So again, if I look at these results, I'm getting ones and zeros. Now essentially, what I want to do is to return one if there is a one on both sides of the multiplication symbol. So if I selected the whole of this formula, you'll see up here, I only get one, one. And that's where there was a one on this side and a one on this side. Now, what I want to do is find the position of that one. And the function that will help me with that is called match. Now the lookup value is one, comma, and the lookup array is returned by this criteria. And my match type is zero, which is basically an exact match. Now I just need to format that as general, but you can see it's returned the correct position for the date range. 28th of the third, 2023 is in this range here, which is in the third row. So what I want to do is based on that position, return this result here. And to do that, I can just use the index function. So my array is the array of results I want to return, comma, and the row number is returned by my match function there. So I just need to close the bracket at the end there for index and I press enter, format this as a percentage. And you can see that I have the correct result. If I change the date to the 17th of September, 2023, I get the correct result again. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next video.